Huh. Video games. They're all just about shooting aliens with big guns, right? Is something you'd expect a casual outside observer to say, back in gaming's early, more pixely years. These days, however, the industry has matured from a brash, action-obsessed teenager to a more emotionally nuanced adult capable of exploring deeper themes and richer narratives. It's now commonplace for games to make us feel something other than rage or elation and to think about a subject more meaningful than our remaining ammo count. And yes, sometimes a particularly well-crafted moment will make us cry a little bit. <clears throat> Um, obviously not us though, we're super manly men, or women, that do macho things like chopping down trees and knitting scarves. Darts! I, I, we said darts! But for anyone who is capable of having feelings, whatever those are, games are more than happy to make you feel quite sad indeed. It might be a beloved character meeting an untimely end, finding ruins of a once great land, perhaps even an introspective look at the human psyche, and sometimes, yes, there are people shooting aliens with big guns, but even that can break your heart sometimes. 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 So let's jump aboard this emotional roller coaster, shall we? And just a warning, there will be a few spoilers, so watch out. Let's look at some! I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 heart wrenching gaming moments that made us cry. Number 10. Bastion. This 2011 action RPG from indie studio Supergiant Games is like having Samuel L. Jackson provide your very own Let's Play commentary. The satisfying combat and gorgeous hand-painted visuals were accompanied by a narrator's dulcet tones, recounting your character's every move with style and panache. Incredible voiceover from Logan Cunningham combined with a sublime soundtrack all helped to sell us on this strange world of floating bits and pieces, broken up because of a mysterious calamity. While the final choice has plenty of emotional weight, what really got to us came before this, when choosing whether or not to save Zolf, a friendly survivor you found earlier, from his angry fellow countrymen, the Ura. Picking him up means dropping your only weapon and slowly marching, defenseless, through legions of Ura, peppering you with what's surely a lethal dose of crossbow fire, until they just stop. Your selfless actions to save a friend inspired the Ura to forget their grudge and let you pass safely, a heartwarming scene made even more poignant by the slow pace and melancholic soundtrack that hit just the right note. Number 9. Mass Effect Mass Effect proved that even alien sexing space epics can have plenty of subtle character development that makes us feel… things. Terrified, for one. Jesus, he's gone all exorcist on us! No, best we stick to the original trilogy, with plenty of tear duct workouts to choose from. The iconic suicide mission in Mass Effect 2 was gut-wrenching if you lost a favourite crewmate, especially if you'd invested heavily in their story. Mass Effect 3, however, was punctuated with depressing events throughout, no matter how good your diplomacy skills were. There was Mordin's valiant sacrifice to reverse the genophage and earn his redemption, Thane's touching prayer during his last moments as his illness finally takes its toll got far too real for us, and then there was Tali, who had us frantically scrambling for the load game option to undo our mistake. Side with the Quarian's mortal enemies, the AI Geth, and Tali will watch in horror as her decimated migrant fleet burns up in their home planet's atmosphere before removing her mask, saying, I'm sorry, and leaping off a cliff. No! Tali, we're sorry! Quick, reload the save! Damn it, reload! Number 8. The Beginner's Guide this one's less of a ball your eyes out moment and more of a slow gnawing at your subconscious. Created by David Reedon, this title takes a different turn from his previous breakout hit, The Stanley Parable, swapping whimsical parody for a more thoughtful approach. You see, The Beginner's Guide was a short but incredibly poignant view into the psyche of a creator, narrated by David himself. You take an interactive virtual tour of his old game development files, levels, and ideas in what felt like a director's commentary, if it were dictated from a psychiatrist. Couch. The more you play through, the more you feel for the narrator as he describes his ongoing struggle with the question, why do we create things in the first place? For fame? Money? A need for expression? Or simply for the sake of it? It's a strange kind of introspective melancholy that makes you feel for the developer and lingers in the mind of anyone who's experienced creating something out of nothing. <sighs> oh well, doesn't have any guns, 2 out of 10. Number 7. 
The Witcher 3. While the Witcher universe may be inspired by old folklore, these are not your average happily ever after fairy tales. Geralt's journey through kingdoms struggling with war, poverty, and corruption shows just how brutal the world of The Witcher truly is. An entire questline following the Bloody Baron, who is objectively a horrible person by the way, almost manages to have us sympathise with the man, losing his entire family in some truly harrowing ways. Forgive us for shedding a silent tear as we find his body hanging from a tree in one of the quest's endings, his psychological torment too much to bear. And if a game can make us feel bad for seeing the bad guys die, you can imagine how gruelling some of the other moments might be. Like the demise of Vesemir, the caring father figure of the Witcher clan. Geralt finding Ciri got us too, the way he slumps in resignation as he thinks he's too late, probably regretting the 20 hours of Gwent he played along the way. Thankfully though, it turned out to just be a prank, bro. Ha! <laughs> Got him! Number 6. Final Fantasy VII it was bound to show up sooner or later, wasn't it? This standout scene in what's considered one of the best entries in the Final Fantasy series still haunts many of us to this day. Seeing Cloud find Eris, resist the evil urge to attack her, and then hearing the dramatic chimes of the music kick in, and just like that, a naive innocence is shattered as we realise that bastard Sephiroth actually did it. Waiting in the rafters for Christ knows how long just so he could surprise attack our feelings. Yeah, people die in Final Fantasy and other JRPGs all the time, but somehow we knew a simple Phoenix Down wasn't going to do the trick this time. Sephiroth chanting some nonsense about the cycle of nature, Cloud screaming at him saying, what about my pain? Granted, all of this was in text form with goofy 1997-era polygons, but the fact this still burnt us emotionally is a testament to the storytelling that defined a video game generation. God, and we gave us so many items too. Number 5. Ori and the Blind Forest. Some games save their dramatic gut punches for the end of the story, giving characters time to develop and earn a place in our hearts. Others, like The Last of Us, honourable mention, honourable mention, honourable mention, go straight for the feels from round one. Ori and the Blind Forest is the second one, with a powerful prologue that introduces a magical spirit, Ori, and her newfound companion, the lumbering, lovable Naru. You look for food together, you adventure together, you literally build bridges together, it's all so delightfully wholesome. And when disaster hits the forest, Naru carries Ori back to shelter. Naru's such a caring, selfless soul that he or she, or she, or she, or she? I don't know, even gives their last scrap of food to Ori. God, you know, we're so lucky to have such a good pal looking out for us. He's just sleeping at the moment, so we'll go out and get some delicious fruits for us both to enjoy. And uh, it's okay, he's just sleeping. He'll wake up soon. <laughs> Naru, that's just like you to sleep in. <laughs> oh, oh, he's not sleeping, is he? Number four, Telltale's The Walking Dead. Over the years, Telltale have managed to squeeze every emotion possible out of us through their interactive storytelling sagas. From the uber-popular franchises like Game of Thrones to niche tales like The Wolf Among Us, Telltale were masters of making an established license their own. And the first season of The Walking Dead not only took our guard down, but smashed it into a thousand tiny pieces! Controlling main character Lee, you've looked after young Clementine throughout this emerging zombie crisis, facing trauma after trauma, and somehow surviving. So when Stupid Lee finally gets bitten. Stupid, stupid, stupid Lee! The sense of impending tragedy grows all the way through the final chapter. While we saw this coming, we had no idea it would be this bad. Enduring the final farewells and the last life lessons from a fading Lee, we're now left to control Clementine, choosing whether to end Lee's life or let him turn. Lee might not remember that, but we bloody well will. Even sadder is the closure of Telltale Games, meaning we won't get to enjoy any more emotional torture. It's a double whammy of sadness, this one. Number 3. Journey Like Ori in the Blind Forest, Journey tells its expressive story through gameplay, cutscenes, and beautiful world-building, only in a more abstract way. As the majesty of this 2012 indie darling lies in its simplicity. You begin not knowing anything, save from a few telling shots of a vast desert and what are probably gravestones, so when you're given control and told off you go, well, off you went. There are a few puzzles and minor gameplay elements to consider, but mostly it's just about experiencing the world and investigating the ruins of what was once a mighty civilization. We discover various clues as to what happened through old relics and less tangible ghostly visions, basically Time Team as directed by an LA art house studio. Finding a fellow traveler along the way created a meaningful bond despite minimal communication. And the ending? 
collapsing in the snow before miraculously gliding up a mountain towards some pearly white light. Looking at it like this, it's hard not to envisage the game as one giant metaphor for life. Okay, maybe we need to go and play Doom or something just as a palate cleanser. Number two, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. More like Brothers, A Tale of Two Thumbs, am I right? Ho, oh, anybody? No, okay. Thought we'd throw that levity in now, as honestly, this game had one of the most sobering moments we've ever experienced. Hooray! Released in 2013, Brothers, A-T-O-T-S, featured a genius game mechanic that saw you controlling one brother with each thumbstick, solving puzzles and overcoming obstacles on a quest to save your dying father. Said that a bit too happily, didn't I? On a quest to save your dying father. A bit better? Let's go with that. Also, the little brother has a crippling fear of swimming because their mother drowned when they were little. Yeah, we warned you it'd be quite heavy, didn't we? Through the several hour long story, the control scheme becomes second nature, a very extension of your hands. So, near the close of the game, when your older brother, aka right thumb, dies from a poison wound, you're left to bury the body, on your own, with just one thumbstick. Scenes of a child no older than 12 burying his brother are brutal enough, but when you physically feel the loss, having spent so long controlling both characters, it hits harder than any mere plot event ever could. The fact that this grief and loss could be conveyed through the control scheme itself was a masterstroke of immersive storytelling. Number 1. Valiant Hearts If we've learned one thing from the heart-stirring story of Valiant Hearts, it's that war makes men sad. This immensely moving 2014 title tells the tale of several soldiers and one dog in The Great War, and all the senseless brutality that came with it. It begins with a family torn apart. Frenchman Emile sees his German son-in-law, Karl, forcibly deported and both men conscripted to fight on opposing sides. We get to see the human side of everyday men and women, fighting not just for their country, but for their own personal stakes or just to survive. At one point, Emile is captured by the very same German division that just so happens to include Karl, and their stories continue to intertwine in grimly fascinating ways throughout, topped off with a real morale-shattering finale. Emile, driven mad by the chaos of war and refusing to join the near-suicidal Nivelle offensive, snaps and hits his soldier with a shovel, accidentally killing him. What follows is a court-martial and death by firing squad. The slow walk to the site of his execution, the desperately sad narration of the final letter to his daughter, the sombre, reflective piano track playing underneath. God, it was enough to turn us into a complete wreck, and it probably did that to you too. Ooh. And there we are. <clears throat> and there we are. Sorry, had something in my throat there. Also, a lot of dust in my eyes all of a sudden. Oh, weird. Let us know which games subjected you to emotional torture in the comments below. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon? Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.